there's a lot of high failure rate. If you talk about, and I talk about this in any of my courses that I teach uh, in front of product managers, in front of product marketing managers, brand managers, any of these related um, fields and professions, these are the courses that I teach. And reality is, is that whether your products are brands or whether your products are multiple things that are branded by one company, there's a high failure rate of either brands when they're consumer products or products that get launched into market and never become profitable. And the failure rate is no matter what experts you're relying to or what market or industries you're looking at, the failure rate is somewhere between 60 to 90%. These are products that work and they work as designed. They just don't meet customer expectations because nobody bothered to actually look at and ask and even test whether customers want it, whether it's priced right, or whether it's the right solution to their problems. And that's the majority of the resources of why products fail. I'm gonna launch this poll and hopefully I won't lose. If I lose a screen, let me know right away, okay, please. But I'm gonna launch this poll. Why? I wanna know if you tell me the reasons why most products would fail. Why is it that 69% and I'm gonna launch this poll now and here are these, right? Pick the best one that you think is, is, is uh, the one that you think most products need to be pulled out after being launched. They're pulled out within two or three years after introduction because they have no chance of becoming profitable or even getting to the revenue growth that you need to achieve ROI on whatever you invested to ideate and design and build and test and launch that product to the market. No chance of recovering and now you just have to withdraw from the market. So pick the best answer out of, is it because your value proposition is unclear to your target customers? Is it because your products don't really know who you are or what you do as a brand, as, as a company, or even for your product? Or is it because you don't understand buyer behavior? Or is it because your offering lacks consistency? Or is it because your entire company struggles to deliver a consistent customer experience? Which one of these do you believe is the greatest source of why products within your company are failing today? And I'm gonna give you a few seconds to respond. I see many of you are still responding and we're gonna be talking and sharing the results real quick. And then we're gonna talk about the real scenarios to why most products fail. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and then share my answer. And here's what you see. The majority of you, so number one, number two, number three are pretty close to each other. That's the first thing. If there's a margin of error, everything, all of these responses are within the margin of error, right? Largest group at 31% I'll believe that it's because you have an inconsistent customer experience. And 29% is the second group, second highest group, and says your value proposition is unclear. 27% is a third group. You don't understand buyer behavior. And then 8% prospects don't know who you are as a brand, as a company, or for the, your, your product. 6% your offering lacks consistency. So in reality, when you talk about what experts are saying, achieving a steady flow of successful products, it's a daunting challenge. Most companies, when I come in and assess companies, even though they have, they've been expanding their portfolio products and that's all they do, they just expand, 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 and they may have not just one product, but multiple product lines and extensions of those products. When you really look at where the majority of the revenue is coming from, number one, and where the majority of their profit, no matter how large their product portfolio is, it typically is no more than a handful, literally. You can have thousands of SKUs available, maybe even tens of thousands of SKUs available, and only one or a handful of products where the majority of revenue is coming from and where the majority of your portfolio's profitability is coming from. So why, why do they do all this work to put out all these losers and they maintain them in market? That's, to me, a sign of a deficient product management function within the organization. Most of these companies, they're in the majority, right? The majority of companies today, even when they have product management in place, 
experience any of these or any combination of these five things because very representative to this, a combination of these, and not just one, but multiple of these that are causing multiple failure after failure after failure, even as they have product managers doing the actual involving the product development process. And it's because often they need to do, they need to work smarter, not harder as an organization. We're going to talk about what that means. So most vendors don't focus on understanding buyer behavior. That's my personal experience. And typically they don't even know how do we as to, if you're if I'm your target customer, how do I go about evaluating products? How do I select the right product for me? And what is what is my purchase decision? And it starts with that because understanding buyer behavior today is the number one thing that you need to understand first before you start even working on a proposed product. Let me repeat this because this is exactly right. If you don't understand buyer behavior and gather the facts and figures, not just your team's perception of what people want, but you go out and start interviewing, that means you go outside your building and interview targets, prospects, not yet your customers, but you understand and empathize with them. This is where you need to start. And by lack of doing this, I can tell you, you're going to make a lot of errors and omissions in whatever you ideate, in whatever you choose to be the market problem to solve, or even the best proposed solution to solve that market problem that your team has identified. And everything goes downhill from there. Doesn't matter how good you are and how much knowledge you have of what you know, uh, technologies that you understand and how expert you are, you're starting with either working on the wrong problem to solve or the wrong proposed solution that has a high market fit. And you're going in the, in the wrong direction to begin with. So often, and this is what BCG is saying, because there is a TED Talk, and I think this TED Talk has been around already available on YouTube. The link to this is, is available. And they're saying today's environment in when there's so much disruption, companies need to not just exploit, which means optimize Horizon One type of products, meaning today's revenue streams. You also need to start exploring, and there's no choice. If you don't explore and exploit or optimize at the same time, you are here today and maybe gone tomorrow. And this is exactly what's happening in many companies. And this is why there's so many product failure because most companies today are either doing just purely a lot of optimization, zero exploration, or some that are just doing mostly exploration, zero optimization, and they have inconsistency in their offering once they launch, and all of these things that lead, all these five things, or any combination of these five things that lead to just repeated product failures. And often, trying to anticipate things that you should have been, should have known or should have been preparing for, and now you're just reacting, this is a fact of life. No one controls the market. No one controls buyer behavior. You need to understand it, and you need to measure it in order to you to figure out what is the right value proposition. And for the lack of doing this, you're making too many assumptions about the complexity of your offering, the volatility of the buy decisions, the ambiguity of the market, and things that may influence demand on the market, and uncertainty. And all of these things equate to uncertain revenue, and it's hard to plan growth when your revenue is going like this, up and down, year to year, quarter to quarter, month to month. You cannot do business or grow a business if your demand is going up and down like this, right? You need to start figuring out how to start focusing on out of the unknown unknowns, identifying them, gather and analyze so that you can actually start making them into known unknowns. And even those variables that can be solved once you have enough information to solve them the right way. And all of this requires a process to, to actually start having this information and the facts and figures and collection is formidable. 